Good morning, students. Today we are going to discuss a very important topic in this chapter, which is composition of two SHM. When two SHM combine with each other, then what happens? What is the resultant amplitude? What is the resultant angle? We are going to discuss analytically in this lecture. Okay, here we are considering two SHM. Having same period, same frequency, and traveling along the same line, same direction. We are considering here these two SHM are traveling along the x-axis, but they have different amplitude and different epoch or the initial phase. Means they are starting from the different initial angle okay so here we are going to consider two type of shm consider the displacement of a single shm represented by x1 this x1 is equal to a1 sin omega t plus phi1 and another simple harmonic motion x2 is equal to a2 sin omega t plus phi 2. This is the two simple harmonic motion having same time period and same direction, but they have different amplitude and different initial phases. Okay, now according to the superposition principle, the Total displacement due to the composition of SHM is given by the vector sum of the individual displacement. So we can write here this x is equal to it is the vector sum of x1 plus x2. Now we are keeping this value. So we get here this is a1 sin omega t. Plus phi one plus a two sine omega t plus phi two. Now, according to the trigonometric relation, sine omega t plus phi one and sine omega t plus phi two can be written in the expanded form as this is. A one. This is sine omega t into cos phi one plus cos omega t into sine phi one. This is the expansion of this sine omega t plus phi one. Okay, plus a two. This is sin omega t cos phi two plus cos omega t into sin phi two. So this is the expanded form of sin omega t plus phi two. Now we are going to take Common omega t and here cos omega t, here sin omega t and here cos omega t. So we get here if we multiply this a one to this bracket and a two to this bracket, so we get this a one sin omega t into cos Phi one again here a one cos omega t into sin phi one plus a two sin omega t cos phi two plus a two Cos omega t into 
omega t into sin of phi. Okay, so now from these two terms, from this and this, from these two terms, we can take a common sin omega. T. So we can write here this sin omega t in bracket. What remains? It is a one cos phi one. A one cos phi one plus a two cos phi two. A two cos phi two plus here. Now from this term and this term, we can take common cos omega t. So we can write here this cos omega t into. Resultant 
amplitude and the resultant initial phase. Okay, and this can be done with the help of these two equations. So we are going to derive a relation for this amplitude, resultant amplitude and this resultant initial phase. So now resultant amplitude. This resultant amplitude is noted by letter capital R. So how this R can be calculated? So squaring and adding these two equations. First of all, we are going to square this equation, square this equation, and we are going to add these two equations. So we get here this R square sine squared L plus R square cos squared which is equal to now which is equal to this a1 sin phi1 plus a2 sin phi2 h square plus a1 cos phi1 plus a2 cos phi2 and whole bracket square. Now we have this R square is common and we get sin square del plus cos square del. And according to the trigonometric relation, sin square del plus cos square del is equal to 1. So we can write here this R square is equal to. Now we are going to square this two brackets. Square of this first bracket is a1 square sin square phi 1 plus twice a1 a2 sin phi 1 into sin phi 2 plus a2 square sin square phi 2 which is the square of first bracket now we can write here plus this is a2 square sin square phi 2 plus twice a1 a2 cos phi 1 into cos phi 2 plus a2 square cos square phi 2. This is the square of this second term. Okay, now this is very long equation, so we are going to take some common from this equation and make it a short equation. So from these two terms we can take sin square which is equal to cos square phi. So from this two terms we can take this a1 common so we can write here this r square is equal to square and in bracket we can write here sin square phi 1 plus cos square phi then from these two terms we can form out a2 square plus a2 square sin square phi 2 plus cos square phi 2 and from this we can common twice a1 a2 so we can write that twice 
Now, we have also some special cases when we can keep here 
case one. What is the case one? As this R is depend upon A1, A2, as well as it is depend upon the phase difference, initial phase difference phi one and phi two. So we are going to keep a case in which this phi one minus phi two is equal to zero. Means phi one is equal to phi two. It means two SHM starting from the same position. Either it is extreme position or it is the mean position. So if phi one minus phi two is equal to zero, then we can write this cos zero is equal to one. So this R becomes this R is equal to under root a one square plus a two square twice a one a two. And this cos of zero is equal to one. This is nothing but the Square root of a1 plus a2 and whole bracket square, which is approximately equal to a1 plus or it's equal to a1 plus a2. So this is the case one in which phi1 minus phi2 is equal to zero, then cos zero is equal to one, and due to this condition, the resultant amplitude becomes a1 plus a2. If another condition we can keep in here that a1 is equal to a2. Is equal to a. Then we can write here this r is equal to twice of a. So when these two uh, cases combine, phi one minus phi two is equal to zero, and a one is equal to a two is equal to a. Then this r is equal to twice. A. This is the first case. Now we are moving towards the second case in which this phi one minus phi two. Is equal to 90 degrees. Is equal to 90 degrees. So we can write here second case, case two. In this case two, this phi one minus phi two is equal to phi by two. That is 90 degrees. And if it is 90 degrees, then this cos phi by two is always equal to zero. So. If this phi one minus phi two or cos phi one minus phi two is equal to zero, then this whole term becomes zero. So what remains? This R is equal to under root a one square plus a two square. Okay. Now if we keep another condition, a one is equal to a two is equal to a, so we can write here under root a square. Plus under root a square is equal to under root twice a square, which is nothing but under root two into. Okay. Now we are moving towards the case three. What is case three? If this initial phase difference phi one minus phi two is equal to phi one one eighty degree. Then this cos of phi is equal to minus one. So if we keep this minus one value here, so we get this R is equal to under a one square plus a two square minus twice a one a two, which is nothing but square root of a one minus a two. What is this? This is the expanded form of a one minus a two square. This square root of square root cancel. So this R is equal to a one minus a two. And if a one is equal to a two is equal to a, then this R is equal to a. So in this way, in this lecture, we discuss the Analytical treatment of the composition of two SHM. Okay, then we derive a relation for the resultant amplitude, and then we also derive a relation for the resultant initial phase depth, and then we derive these three cases. Okay, so in this lecture we discuss all about the composition of two SHM. In the next lecture we are going to discuss the energy stored. 
during the simple harmonic motion potential energy kinetic energy and total energy so here we are going to stop now have a good day bye